A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hello! Uh, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Paloma, my artist name is Paloma the Peach, and I am a full-time artist. I make videos here on YouTube about mostly my everyday work life, but also sometimes I like to make little videos like this one to help anybody out with their artistic journey. So in today's video, I am kind of updating my Procreate process with you guys. Um, it has been about almost like three years since I made my first Procreate process video and my style and color palette and process is just completely different. I am I was 19 at the time I think that I made that video and I'm now 22 so I, uh, pretty much everything has changed and I just kind of wanted to share the little changes that I've made and the extra stuff that I've learned along the way when it comes to digitally painting in Procreate. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and I hope this video is helpful. Now it's time to show you guys my painting. All right, so this is my iPad. Um, this is the 2020 iPad Pro, the 11.8 inch, I believe. And this is what I use to draw digitally 100%. I always draw on my iPad and I draw on Procreate. There's a lot of different techniques that I use and I'll go over most of them, but uh, it's been quite a while, like I stated, since my last Procreate video. The first one I ever did was in 2020 and it really blew up, but honestly my art and my interests and my techniques and everything are like completely different now. So lots more to learn in this one, but yeah, I... This is what I use. I use Procreate and um, I'm gonna draw a piece for you guys. I'm gonna go through the process with you. I'm gonna share some brush sets that I've purchased and that I really enjoy and some of my favorites, singular brushes. So yeah, so as you can see, I've purchased a lot of brush sets, but my personal favorites are the Retro Max Pack set, the Shrill Art Traditional brush set, uh, those are my two favorites are, and really the only ones that I tend to go for. The other ones are like for pretty specific stuff like this Duplatone set is really nice but I don't use it in every single piece. Uh, the Broken Inkers are really nice, the Grains. This Vivi brush set is really nice for artwork when I want it to be really soft. Uh, these are just like some faux risograph brushes but uh yeah and then here i have some of my favorite brushes but i haven't really updated it um but yeah so those are the brush sets that i have and those are my favorites to sketch i will start with the max u gouache flow lately this is just what i've been using to sketch um sometimes i will use uh, the 6B. So the 6B pencil comes with Procreate, but I have edited it into a lot of different brushes for like different needs. Um, and so I have like my mega version, my flat version, and then the original version. Um, sometimes I will use my flat version to sketch, but lately I've been feeling the gouache flow brush. And I have a lot of different color palettes. But uh, as you can see, there is definitely a theme of the colors that I enjoy. I like to go in with my classic red to sketch and I like to make my background this ivory color and I can start sketching my idea. I just, lately I feel a lot more free sketching with this gouache brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my sketch down. I already have an idea of what I wanna do. Um, I wanna do like my first Halloween illustration of the year. So I'm gonna kind of do like a big pumpkin with ghosts around it. I did something similar last year, but it was just a simple Inktober prompt painting. So it wasn't like super detailed or anything, but this year I kind of wanna amp it up a little bit.
So I kind of have my rough sketch finalized. I might want to add a little bit more. I might do something to the pumpkin, but for right now, this is what I have and I'm going to start painting. So the brushes that I use really varies. Uh, the more simple I want it to look, I will use the 6B pencil. I will use this gel pen um, brush that I made myself. So I will stick to those if I want it to be more simple. If I want it to be a lot more painterly, I will stick to the Procreate gouache brush. I will stick to the Max U Retro Max pack with like all these really nice gouache and watercolor brushes. Um, but normally I will fall somewhere in between. So I will use a combination of pencils and gouache brushes. So I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna start laying down some color. So I kind of just wanted to talk about my process a little bit more while you guys watch me get this artwork done, but uh, as you can see I'm using the gouache brush to lay down areas of color and uh, I've the way that I've kind of changed my process on Procreate is I try to keep everything on the same layer. I won't do like smaller details or if I'm trying stuff out I will do that on a different layer. But I do try to keep everything on the same layer just because I do want to get more of that like painterly feel, if that makes sense. Because on a canvas in real life, when you're painting, you don't have layers. You're just painting around other stuff that you've painted or on top of or whatever. So that's kind of like the look that I've been wanting to go for. So I like to keep everything on the same layer kind of just like layered colors on top of each other and whenever I make a mistake I try to not erase it and just kind of like paint over it again like how you would on a real life canvas if you made a mistake with your paint you would just paint over it to correct it or with a different color so that is what I try to do here as well and you guys will see me do that throughout this video how I just like correct things by painting it over and right now as you can see I am going over that green color with a different green color just to add more depth and make it a little bit more opaque but yeah that's kind of like the basis of artworks that are like super complete like this one that's kind of my process if I do something more simple then I won't do as much like color layering and stuff like that Another thing that, well, another thing that I've learned slash little thing I like to add whenever I am coloring in a piece, and maybe you guys will catch it every now and then, um, I like to kind of add some shifts in hue in each color or each large area of color. So how you do this or how I do it personally there's a lot of different ways that you can do it but how I do it is I open up the brush settings so you just do that by clicking on the brush that you're using at that moment and then it'll open up the brush studio and then I go down to color dynamics and then where it says stroke color jitter for hue I turn it up to anywhere between one to four percent depending on how much I want the color to change while I'm coloring it in and basically what it does is while you are like scribbling it in on the piece it every time you pick up and then put it down again the hue will shift slightly and as you can see you can like mess with it a little bit more like you have an option with saturation lightness darkness secondary color etc but I like to kind of add that in Again, whenever I'm doing a more painterly piece like this one, I think it just adds a little bit more character and again, makes it look a little bit more realistic to how it would be when you are painting traditionally.
Something else I wanted to talk about that, you know, is really important to digital painting and that is my color palette. I feel like I've really refined the colors that I like to use and kind of like my signature color palette and that is based around red and green. Um, they are complementary colors on the color wheel. If you are not super familiar with color theory, I highly recommend you just watch some youtube videos on it you don't have to do like any formal classes or anything but color theory is really really helpful when you are creating color palettes um i don't consciously use it anymore because i've been creating art for so many years that i it becomes kind of instinctually like after you learn about color theory and you mess around with color so much you kind of base what colors to choose and how much to use of each one off of more of like a gut instinct. Getting started with color theory and learning it can kind of help you get there. And like I said, I base my general color palette around red and green. And that includes like a lot of different varieties like pinks and oranges, yellows, and then greens, teals, darker greens, warm greens, cool greens. Um, those are just like my main colors. All, obviously this is all up to personal preference. Um, each color palette for every artist is unique. Even if there's another artist that does red and green based palettes as well, our palettes could still look completely different. But what I recommend for color palettes is definitely using color palette maybe generators or going on pinterest and looking up color palettes to kind of get you started and see what colors you like to gravitate towards uh that's how i get started and whenever i see a color palette somewhere like if you've ever seen them you know what i'm talking about but like the color palettes that are like a bunch of squares that they have on pinterest they're like oh this color palette is like summer or spring or whatever whenever i see one that i really like i will drop it into procreate so procreate another really great feature about them is that you can create color palettes based on pictures and so what i will do is i will click the little plus sign and select new from photos and it will generate a little palette for me based on the photo that you use so i like to do that also sometimes i like to take pictures of stuff in real life that i like the colors of or like the combination of colors and i will put it in there and it tends to generate really cute color palettes and of course you don't have to use every single color that procreate generates for you but usually you will get like a handful of colors that you really like out of there because one thing about working digitally is the color choices can be really, really overwhelming. I would say I did not start feeling super confident in the color choices when it comes to digital painting until the last few months or so. Color is easily one of the hardest things that people have to adjust to, I feel, when it comes to creating art, especially digitally, like I've said. But yeah, I like to stick to red green and I like a really nice warm palette and this piece I did add the blue in there because lately I've kind of been feeling this like light desaturated corn flower blue I've just kind of been into it lately for some reason um, so I've been kind of incorporating it into my art but uh, I am really not into cool colors I do not like purple i went through a small phase where i really did like purple but i just don't feel 
connected to it at all it doesn't feel like me whatsoever so i just i do not like purple uh blue like i said is extremely rare for me and whenever i use pink i like to use an almost orange pink i really don't like cool toned pinks or magentas or stuff like that so yeah i personally like a really warm color palette again i recommend kind of like just looking at pictures and seeing what colors you gravitate towards the most and also kind of like look at other stuff in your life um i like to always buy stuff in my color palette personally um you know my furniture my clothing smaller things like a phone case and just random stuff i tend to buy in my favorite colors and that's how i've kind of noticed what they are exactly and if you notice you buy a lot of pink stuff you know maybe that's going to be like part of your signature color palette but as far as choosing colors in my piece i kind of again i just kind of use my gut i don't know how to describe it but like whenever i visualize a piece in my mind i kind of like there's kind of like a mood that i want to achieve and in this one it's kind of like not scary but spooky but still kind of magical vibes is what i wanted to go for and i kind of wish i had done it like a little bit darker because it feels a little bit too happy for what i was wanting to achieve but yeah i i kind of base what colors i aim for with like the mood that i want to go for so you know this is hollow this is a halloween Thing. so i used a lot of orange and then i added a little black cat but yeah that's how i kind of choose them and sometimes i go for a more desaturated look in my pieces so i will concentrate most of the colors on desaturated hues and then sometimes i'll go like super saturated but i do like to keep a nice balance of desaturated and saturated because i find that if I use too much of one or the other, if I if I use too many desaturated colors, for me personally, it feels a little bit washed out. And if I use too much saturation, for me personally, it's a little bit too loud for my taste. But yeah, color is just like a huge personal preference and also just like connection, I feel like, at least for me. So just messing around with different colors is how you're going to figure out what you like and what you don't like. Já não quer mais tocar E as teclas pretas não saem do lugar Quando o corno inglês Ter que ir pro xadrez So 
Once I finish a piece, I do like to add a little layer of texture. Sometimes I will do noise from the little wand icon at the top. I will turn up some noise as a finishing layer, but here I'm using a paper overlay and I usually put it on overlay or soft light and then I turn down the opacity, but I think it just adds like a really nice finishing touch and um, you can find paper overlays for free, I think, on Pinterest, but these are from a Skillshare class on paper cutting, but yeah, that's my finished artwork. And that is it for my Procreate process. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was helpful or at least a little bit soothing to be watching me paint on Procreate. But yeah, thank you for watching again and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. So before I close out today's vlog, I wanted to talk about the sponsor, which is Squarespace. Of course, you guys already know. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's an all-in-one platform where you can create your very own website. It's the platform that I have always used to run my website and my online business. Some stuff that really helps me out with selling my art online on Squarespace is the commerce tool. It helps me keep track of orders, inventory, customers, etc. Um, the website analytics help me see how my website is performing, like how many views and clicks it gets. And the design interface is really beginner friendly and I get to customize my website quite a bit. So if you're interested in a free trial, you can go to squarespace.com and use my code for 10% off your first purchase.